Ardno, the Baron de Rene, calls Las Alas here in Manzanillo, Mexico, the most luxurious resort any place in the world. Now, I don't know if that's quite true for the simple reason that I've never been to all of the world's luxury spas, but it is lovely here. And everything is extremely well tailored, including the guest list. This crowd is certainly one of the most lavish and expensive I've ever seen assembled anywhere. George, I think it's fair to say that you, more than any other star, movie star person, has been associated with the beautiful people and, and that world, whatever the world is. You know, how, how do you view yourself in perspective to that? What does beautiful people mean to you? Well, you know, it's a strange word. It's like Jet said. I mean, nobody yeah. ever really wants to own up to it. You know, you can't find anybody when you... You try to, to find somebody who says they are, you know, it's, it's something you don't, I guess, sort of a, an unspoken group. Maybe it goes back to years ago when people, you know, had that 400 or whatever it may be. They wanted to have something that was a part, and I guess they sort of came up with a group of people that were amusing. But, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's a weird thing. This, the, the plane coming down yesterday, it was like a jet set Noah's Ark. They had one of everything. And I felt like I was, a, you know, I was chosen like an actor. We would, would get the actor. But I've known all these people all my life, and um, it's a close-knit kind of group of people who, who uh, feed their own needs, each other's needs. But let me ask you, in a, in a period when the world is in crises with, uh, with an energy shortage, with inflation and rising costs and rising unemployment, do you, do you think that this might be uh, a little tacky? Well, but you know, the funny thing about it is that people want to escape. And you think that people... That people at home now can escape through these people. Uh, through the places like this. They want that. When I started in that, my image was all wrong. I mean, I was at a time when people didn't want that image. And I was going around driving the rolls and doing all this. People didn't want to see that. Now, all of a sudden, uh, I find that the younger kids that I never even knew of are coming into to, to wanting escape. And they, and they do really outrageous things, you know. That's what streaking is all about, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think the most outrageous thing was the guy that streaked the other day with his clothes on through the nudist colony. <laughs> I mean, that's my kind of idea of streaking. I think that's dynamite. What, what about, uh, you know, you're happily married now, but you went through a, a period with, uh, uh, with the, president's, the president's daughter. Did that really establish, do you think, the kind of... Uh, uh, you know, your, your level within the world of the... Well, I think, in, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, all these people I knew way before that, and I think that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, I think that that is an experience which, which was both good and bad, perhaps. Uh, my life is really fantastic now. I've got a wife that I love very much and, and, a, and a child uh, due in September. On the airplane. George and I also talked about the man who seemed the most popular on our airplane, world-famous <laughs> plastic surgeon, Dr. P. Tangi. He'd done so much work on one woman at the gala that George told me that the cleft in her chin was once her navel. That was once her navel. <laughs> I find it really fascinating. So I love to watch the, watch the people, and, and uh, especially something like this. Everyone is, is so conscious of themselves and the way they look, and if everybody's looking at them, and if they're being photographed as much as somebody else is being photographed. And I don't know. I, I find it's fun because I, I can't say that, uh, that it doesn't impress me in a way. I mean, I was a little girl. I grew up in Texas, and, and being around all these people, it is fascinating. Of all the places you've stayed, do you like this the best? Yeah. Why? Because I really feel myself. What I've got everything I need here. <laughs> what, what do you need? I stretch out my head and get it. It's, it's nice, huh? Yeah, great. Well, isn't know. it that way in Paris also? No, yeah, something that's very difficult to, get, to find. <laughs> what do you do there in Paris? Well, I used to take courses of dramatic art. And I stopped and now I'm... Uh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I have fun, let's say. <laughs> You're a professional fun person. Yeah, woo! What a well, well, do you think of yourself as a necessity or as a luxury to the women? Uh, I think of myself as a luxury. They think I'm a necessity. How much do you think the women have spent on their dresses? Well, um, I know they've spent an awful lot. I would venture saying one has probably spent about five thousand. Five thousand dollars. And do you think she'll ever wear it again? Chances are she may not. I think that most of these people which were there during this weekend um, are people which have been doing their life, some of them as well as they could. And I think some of them did quite well. I think beautiful is a, is a, 
one that doesn't quite fit the description. Mm -hmm. Although, uh, I saw them described in the magazine as burps, which is, <laughs> which is a, a variation on. Uh, this was, in fact, just on the plane coming down. It was beautiful and rich and rich people, which I think is perhaps more, more appropriate. You see it as some kind of social statement, or is it just people having fun and enjoying the fact that there are a lot of prominent people all together in one place? I, I think so, yes. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it's, it, it's awful to bite the hand that feeds one, it's, and it's lovely to be invited into such a beautiful place. But I suppose, basically, the idea behind it is a commercial one, to attract as many people to come back again. And I'm sure it, it'll probably happen. Each of us has ups and downs. And we suffer, and we are happy, and we decide to do something, we do it, it doesn't work, we'll try it again. We're all human beings. We're basically constituted in the same way, I think. All of us are the same. I think that there are two things. That there, there is the image, of course, that you must stand for. But to get to this image, you must do a lot. And it's a, a lot of work, a lot of things you must give, and a lot of things that you must know how to take. You know, I won the Bagama Championship in Stars last year. You did? Yeah. Players was a bit bad. <laughs> Kenneth J. Lane is a world-famous designer of jewelry. He's a beautiful person by anybody's definition. He goes to all the big parties. He was at Las Alas and uh, just about every other party I've read on the Society pages this year. How did that one rate, Kenny? Um, that was the freest party. <laughs> yes, it really was a free load. I feel guilty about saying anything nasty about it because it was a freebie. Uh, there was a wonderful thing in women's wear once. It was a, a year of a lot of junkets. and um, This one was for the opening of a new hotel in California given by the Jules Stein. So it was also a very good cause because it was a benefit for Jules Stein's eye hospital. And, you know, I mean, he's a man who gives an enormous amount of money away. And all these people were lined up at... Uh, at Kennedy Airport, and there was this picture in women's wear, and it says, no wonder the beautiful people are so beautiful they never pay for anything. <laughs> I, I, I've heard reports that that party cost uh, the Patinos anywhere from 400000 to $800,000. I don't think it costs more than, than a big publicity opening of any commercial venture like that. I mean, this was not a self-indulgent party. This was the publicity opening of an expensive hotel to attract the world to come there and spend money. I mean, it also employs a lot of Mexicans from the villages near there. Um, you know, it really was a commercial venture. Well, it's not self-indulgent on the part of the owners, but it certainly is on the part of the participants. Don't you agree? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> what about the white-on-white -white ball? I mean, there's stories of people spending extravagant amounts on their dresses, $5,000, without the jewelry or the trimmings. Is that bad? I, mean, I don't know if it's bad. Um, Just tell me about the ball. You know, I think the, um, there'll always be parties, and there are, whether it's a bar mitzvah or a Greek wedding or an Italian wedding, whatever it happens to be, there'll always be parties, and people will always spend a lot of money for the dress, whether it's the mother of the bride or going to a ball. I don't think it was really a ball. It was um, the last night, and they cleverly made it sort of in costume, because otherwise it would have been like the other evenings. And do you think it had any kind of magic? There's the film of it. Who are some of the people here? Carmen. From Rio, she is. From Rio. Sergio Mendes. That's uh, Simone Levin. Oh, that's, isn't that the king of Bulgaria? Uh, yeah, if you flash by, that, that was um, Sylvie. Robert Stack. Uh, it's Sergio Mendes music. Well, thanks for coming with us. I don't know if we made any point about the beautiful people. I was going to have a scathing commentary, actually, about the irrelevance and the apparent pointlessness of the lives of the beautiful people, but I really decided why bother, because if I had a ton of money and nothing really to do, I'd probably be a beautiful person also. To me, I think it's a victimless exercise in decadence. And thanks for coming, Kenny. Is the grass still greener? An abbreviated and highly personalized report on marijuana when we come back in a minute.